No matter what I do, people chuckle at me. I don't know what it is. Have this thing, listen. Ring, like that ring, ring, ring. I don't know what I'm doing. I always try to be cool, see? I come out and try to be cool. It doesn't, never works. And no matter what I do, it just never works. I have like the color co coordinated guitar chord and shirt. <laughs> and wait. And pick. <laughs> and I have like a song I was gonna do, right? And then I changed my mind. And it's like, it, it never like I can change my mind and think of something cool to do to, to act like I didn't change my mind. It's like, I changed my mind and there's nothing to do to cover it up. I don't know what it is. Can you hear me okay? Can I have a little bit more uh, vocal in the monitor? Just a little bit. Just like a little bit. Test. That's more than a little bit. I'm just giving this guy a hard time. He's so nice. He's so nice, you know, he's like, oh man, what's this guy? Doing? People are gonna be staring at him all night up in that little kind of crow's nest thing. Come lift him up, Lord of glory. I don't know why I did that. It, just, it felt good. I don't know. This is what I've been to do. This is great, man in the box. To the left is the right, to the right is wrong. And the night calls to me. I hear the temper knocking, tend to call and take another step, take another look, and you'll be falling. No, I've come too far. The means too much for me to stray. I've come too far. Love me still. To turn away I can hear the clock striking midnight My heart is keeping down to the break of day And though the darkness try me Failures find me I won't turn away I've come to Thank you. 
in my living room, right? I do this at home in my living room. It's like, got these Japanese things. The lights and stuff. You, you guys over here, you're messing it because it's like this blinking stuff and it's so great. It's so hi-fi looking, it's amazing. So, uh, can you give me a little bit um, more of, I don't know, I'm hearing like a lot of monitor and I like it, right? But I like to hear like more of that. Is it too loud? You never ask people stuff, right? They never know what they want. There's like every other person wants something different. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry I ask you anything. Just can you turn it just a little bit? Thank you. I can really tell that's louder already. I don't know. I got this kid, right? My kid, he's nuts. He's really nuts. You know, we dedicate him here. Some of you guys might have been here. He's nuts. I don't know. You know, you ask the Lord, Lord, I, I, I need something. I need something. Next thing you know, you get this kid, right? And I'm thinking, no, that's not it. That's not what I need. He's up all night, right? We've been on, uh, working down in Mississippi for three or four weeks, and I just lost, like, all track of time. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's a fried chicken or something down in the humidity and the mosquitoes, you know. And I left there about 10 years ago, and... You know, you could like swat a mosquito. Now you got to get a baseball bat and watch for them, you know, because they come around, you, know, you got to hit them or they'll like, they'll gnaw it in half and then bite you anyway. It's, it's amazing. But this kid, you know, we were like trying to sleep and, you know, we didn't have a place where we had to sleep with us. You have kids sleep with you sometimes? It's like horrible, right? <laughs> you know, I'm like trying, you know, he's, uh, we go to sleep and he's asleep and I say, well, he's got my pillow. <laughs> and I'm dad, right? And I'm the boss, but he's got my pillow, so I, I just rolled him off, <laughs> rolled him off the pillow, and, and I, you know, and I thought I was cool, and I went to sleep, and I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning, I was down at the foot of the bed sideways, and he was up at the regular size of the bed, and he had my pillow back, he just sprawled out, right, he's like, yeah, I show you in the middle of the night, I'll come back and get you back, big guy, <laughs> but he's into like Kraft macaroni and cheese really heavy, you know, you, you know that, I don't know if my wife's lazy or what, but it, you, can, you can make that stuff so fast. It's just like you just look at it and you go, it's ready, right? <laughs> you have to put it in the microwave and it just heats up all by itself. I don't know what it is. But he likes his, he likes like, you know, you can like, you can put them in your mind and kind of go, and they kind of, they kind of like an oyster or something, you know, kind of just, just slip right through. And he likes messing with them and stuff. And when they get full, you notice how kids like do creative things. They like throw their food, you know, do a torpedo thing, right? He's nuts. And his mom, she, she tries to not encourage that kind of stuff, but when I'm alone in the kitchen with him, he's in his high chair and he's doing this, I'm like, go for it, rah! You know, because he's like so great. And he gets into it and he starts going, ah, like that. And I'm thinking, this kid's great. You know, he's great. But he, he was standing up in his chair and he got some down in the seat, right? And he started mashing his feet in it, you know, and he was going, having a great time. But he got so excited, he slipped and he fell completely out of the chair, right? Hit his head. I took him outside because she came running in. You kill my kid with macaroni and cheese, you know, like that. And I'm thinking, oh, man, I got to get away from this maniac mom, you know. And I, I take the kid and I run outside, you know, and I'm a new dad. I don't know how to act. I don't know what to do, you know. So, so I run outside and he's got this, we got this lemon tree in our backyard. And he thinks it's magic because these balls grow on it, right? And he can pull these little yellow balls off and go play with them in the yard. And they're like everywhere, right? But I took him over to the lemon tree. I'm trying to calm him down. I'm thinking, I like this kid. He's great. You know, and I'm like biting him on his head, trying to get him to, you know, be cool and stuff. <laughs> I'm thinking, man, he's so great. And I want him to have everything he needs. And I, you know, I want to be a provider by looking. I think, oh, no, I haven't got a chance, you know. But I think he's so great. I want to do something for him. I'll do anything for this kid. And I get to thinking about, you know, back when I said, Lord, I need something. And he gave me this kid. And I don't know why I gave it to him, but I'm starting to understand. Because I knew nothing, absolutely nothing about the father part of God. You know, there was just, I didn't know. 
you know, you, you become a dad and you start knowing stuff. And it's so great. You start feeling stuff and you think, what does the Lord think about this? You know, what's, like, you know, I'm this kid's father and I want so much. And it's just nothing compared to my father and what he wants for me. So when, you know, when God starts dragging you through the changes, you know, and dragging you through the trials, because, you know, we never want to go. We never want to do that. We see a trial come, we break and run. We see a trial coming, and think, I smell a trial. I'm getting out of here, you know? <laughs> that kind of stuff, right? But it, it makes it kind of work because you, you think, well, he's my father, and he cares about me. He's, in fact, he's crazy about me, and he wants to take care of me, and he wants to provide for me, and wants me to be stronger, so he knows what he's doing, so I'll accept this. And even, even failures, things that hurt, you know, things, things that are really uncomfortable, are okay because he's God, he's, he's a father and it makes it kind of worth it. What song am I gonna do now? No, okay. Oh, I'm changing. You need a little more vocal. Okay. Not there. Sweeter and sweeter along my way. Is it thing? Favor. I'd like it. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Seasons of changing in every way. Oh, because of you.
My kid, we had this party. I can't, I keep going with this kid, right? I'm trying to be cool, right? But I can't because I'm thinking about my kid because he's like at home and I'm missing him and stuff, you know? But the other night they had this party for all the, it was kind of for me and my wife and there was all these friends from like 12, 13 years back when we first became Christians. And there was this guy that, uh, my mother-in-law is a chaplain in the, uh, Mississippi State Penitentiary System, and she's the only female chaplain in a male correctional institute in the whole nation. And she's kind of a firecracker, little short English lady, kind of nuts, you know, and she's great. And, and a couple years ago, I produced an album for a guy that has an inside prison ministry, and he came to this, they got him out in one of those little trucks, you know, that uh, has bars and stuff in it, and they have these guards, and they brought him to this party. And he was gonna, it was a real big thing, he was gonna get up and sing for me, and my kid, has this tendency when he hears a groove, he like loses his mind and starts going in these convulsions, you know, he's like, and he's got this kind of cool Pentecostal thing he does, he kind of like starts grooving, and he does this hand like this, you know, and it's great, you know. So, right, you know, this, this guy, you know, it's a really special thing, a little party thing, and, and uh, so this guy came and he was gonna sing this song, and it had a, it was called More Than a Feeling, it had this really great groove to it. And, and he got about halfway through the first verse, and my kid went down front, right? right in front of him and started doing this, right? And the guy lost his breath and had to stop. He just couldn't get through the song because my kid ruined it for him and stuff. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I just kind of, oh. It's kind of crazy, you know. I, I'll be thinking something really cool and all of a sudden I'll see this little head. In my mind, I'll see this little blonde head and it's kind of going up and down, I think. And I was at a concert in Bakersfield and he crawled up on the stage while I was singing and started convulsing. <laughs> And, you know, so sometimes I'm, I, I kind of think, well, if he was here right now, he'd be, like, up here convulsing for you guys. And it would be weird. But it's like, I don't know, it's just so neat. You know, every, every change, everything that happens is even, you know, I've been through some things lately that just, like, hurt. Like, I've never hurt before. You know, things that would just kind of go sour in a relationship. And it's like, oh, man, I didn't even see this coming. And it, it's crazy. I mean, the world out there, it's not... You think about Christians, you know, the scripture's about taking on the whole armor of God, you know, every day. You just, you put on the armor. And it's not like you put on the armor to just stand there and do nothing. You know, and the, and the arrows come and pff, pff, they hit you and they fall off, right? You're okay. <laughs> it's like, I like more the, let's go and, and get them. <laughs> right? Instead of like, you know, having things that bug you or having relationships that are weird, it's like, well, put on your armor and commit everything to the Lord and then go get them. Like people, they, they're out there and, you know, it seems like some of the churches, they kind of draw back to do this kind of suburban thing. 
And that way, when they're doing suburban things, they're doing family things, and they can like make more money, and they can kind of build these buildings, and everybody in suburbia is happening. But it's almost like we withdraw sometimes, because all around us, you know, there are people that don't know the Lord and don't know what we feel in our hearts. And we have to go get them. Like, not like be obnoxious or pounce on them or nothing, but go get them. And it's just like there's sin, you know, we deal with sin in our lives. It's not like we just wait, well, I hope that sin doesn't come and bite me today. <laughs> or like, oh man, damn taste it. It's like if there's something wrong in your life, you don't just sit around and wait for it to go away because I got stuff, you know, that I've been praying a million times at least. Lord, I'm just going to wake up in the morning. I'm not going to have this problem anymore, right? Wrong. <laughs> I wake up and there it is waiting for me to get out of the bed so it can knock my face off. It's like we got to go get that stuff, right? We got to go get them Canaanites and drive them out, you know? We got to take the land. And each of us are, you know, we're responsible for... Oh, change my mind again. Each one of us are responsible for, for the thing. Oh, like the thing. Yeah. We're, we're responsible for that part of our lives, you know. No one else holds that place. We have like our own soul. I got a kid, he's got his own soul. Got a wife, she's got her own soul. Every individual has a responsibility to your own your own soul. And, and like eternity stuff, right? There's a place there for you. You decide where you're going to spend it. In the presence of the Lord or not. And it's just like, you know, I, I see all the stuff that needs to be done and I know I can't do it. I see the world and I see, yes, they're going to hell. And I say, the secular humanists, yeah, they're doing their thing. Yeah, they don't even know what sin is anymore. Why you talk about sin to these guys? They don't even understand it. They don't, there ain't no right and wrong. You doing to do something? You just do it. You want to kill somebody? Go right ahead. No problem. You know, you can just go to jail. It's nice. They have nice rooms. Uh, three meals a day. Everything's cool. Just go ahead. You know, there's like, it's just like the world's just kind of hanging out, right? I can't change them. You can't change them. We have a responsibility to our own soul. I have control over the quality of my life. You have control over the quality of your life. And if you don't take the time to allow Jesus to show you how to create quality and substance in your soul, then you lose. You lose. But if you do, then all of a sudden you're walking down the street. One day you got substance in your soul. You got some character because you're not freaked out about who you are anymore. Because you see, Christian, you know, the whole Christ-like concept. We were made in the image of God. Adam blew it. We lost it. Jesus bought it back. So, we have this potential now because of the cross and His resurrection power and the guidance of the Holy Spirit to become pretty happening people. You know, we can, we can, it's not like, I can't love them. Yes, you can. I can't forgive them. Yes, you can. I can't do this. I hate it. You can. You can do it. Because of Christ, you can do it. The one that strengthens you gives you a potential of doing anything. And there is no limit. And you don't have to sit around and, well, I don't have a vision. With your eyes closed. I don't know. I find that all those simple things in the Bible work every single time. Every promise that he gives works every single time. Every time I call his name for some strange reason, I sense his hand working in my life. And I've told you guys that know me for years that I'm an idiot. And every time I turn around, he's doing something on my behalf. And then when I open up the scripture and I read from the beginning to the end, he's done something over and over and over. He's done something for you and I. And we still have this ability to just turn and walk away. But it's up to us what we do with what we find. And truth is always there. It's always been and it'll always be the truth in God's word. 
But you have to find it fresh. You, you person, you have to do it. You're the one that decides whether you get up and make something out of your life. You're the one that's... And I'm not talking some kind of, hey, man, I'm somebody. I'm talking about taking up your cross and following after him. Because he knows how to deal with it. If we don't allow him to lead, we lose. It's simple. We lose. That's a good song right here. I'm going to tell you, this is a good one. I don't... <laughs> It's going to work. I really wish I could say that you could make me leave and all your dreams would come true. Just don't make it here in reality when your heart's breaking in two. So close your eyes, when it's over, it's up.
So we find truth. We still have the ability as human beings to just turn around and, and walk away. Every single one of us, no matter how Christian you get, or how cool you think you are, or how you may think that you have arrived because maybe the Lord has spoken to you several times and you feel that he's guided you several times through something. You never reach a place where you can't be turned. Every step is very crucial in a Christian's life. Every, every single move is very, very important. I mean, just let's just think of ourselves and let's, let's think of the Apostle Paul and what kind of man of God he was and how his very words have saved some of our lives. And he said, we must die daily. And in order, I mean, you know, what you do when you, when you die daily, that means you take your desires and yourself, these self-love type of things that you indulge in, just, just purely out of selfishness. And you take those things and you throw them away. You set them to the side. And you reckon those things dead. And you know, you think, oh, that's an, I've heard that a million times, reckon them things, those things, those things dead, the old man dead. I mean, I think, oh, I'm tied up in it. It's not bondage. It's freedom. It's freedom to take yourself and, and sit it aside and follow Christ. He didn't save us into bondage to where we sit around and think, I don't know if I should do this or I don't know if I should not do that. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> he didn't save us to be those kind of people. He would turn on the radio and say, oh, I'm stuck in the music. Ah. Then we turn it off. <laughs> we turn on the TV, right? Half of us are scared to death, right? Ha! I heard that! You know. You know, some guy stubs his toe and says an ugly word, and you're like, offended. Oh, brother, don't say that in front of me. Because I'm happening. You know, it's just, you know, you, you, you think about self all the time. Everything's, all the thoughts, all your, when you sit around and contemplate things, your things about, how you feel about what someone did to you or, or how you would be affected by or how I am or I this and, and it's, it's, a, it's a dead end street that's why when they ask Jesus what, what would you say to us Jesus you know you're taking off what would you say to us he told them you gotta love each other how do you do that how do you love the other guy well if you're thinking about yourself all the time and you're worried about your salvation all the time. You're worried about you should do this or you shouldn't do that because it's going to make you feel guilty. You're not so necessarily upset that it's, you're going to reap some kind of weird stuff from it. You know, you just don't want to feel guilty, right? So you don't do things. I think a lot of Christians have self in mind when they follow Christ. He's God. He's nuts about you. So he told us to do certain things. I think of the cross. I hear a lot of theology and not a whole lot of cross. It saved my soul. We're talking about a couple of guys. I was producing this rock record and we were talking. These guys were talking about some comedian that was making fun of Jesus and they thought it was funny. And I just spoke up and I said, evidently, you don't know this guy that saves you from an eternal hell with his very blood. He wouldn't be laughing. He frees us. Isn't that so great? We're free. Get that in your head? You're free. It's not like, I don't want to do, oh, I'm going to do this. No, maybe I shouldn't. All that confusing stuff that's in your head, it's silly. It's very selfish. You're just worrying about yourself. That's why he wants us to go and get him. 
Because when we're thinking about the other guy, we're thinking, oh, I see this person and they, they need this and they need that and I want to go and I want to like love them up. You know, it doesn't bother me when a guy's a jerk. It doesn't bother me at all. I go grab them. Guys that are jerks, I don't avoid them. I go get them. Grab them around the neck. Come here, you jerk. <laughs> it's really cool, I promise you. It's work. When I was in Bible school, there was these like, really, you know, these really like legit kind of guys, right? Theology kind of, divinity kind of, whatever those guys are, you know? Nice suits, you know? Really, really like starchy, right? I go grab them guys and hug all over them when I'm like, you know, I just break them down, you know, love them up. Somebody moves in the neighborhood, you know, you ain't got to like nail no cross on their door. You just bake them some bread. <laughs> go over to their house. Be friends. You get so scared about that unequally yoked scripture that you're just kind of freaking out. I don't know if I should go over there or not. <laughs> if you don't go, who's going to go? If you don't care, who's going to care? You see, if we're all like doing that every day, caring and giving, then we don't, we don't stand to lose, you know, our, pri our priorities begin to kind of get in line. And then the other, and like, man, do you know how much dying to yourself every morning when you get up, you know, just kind of, I don't want to live for Roby today. You know how much that helps a marriage? You know, when they get, when you get in a fight, you don't do this and you don't do this and they don't get, I don't get this and I don't get that because you don't do this, you don't do that. <laughs> But what if you're like walking around thinking about doing something for her and she's walking around thinking about doing something for you and then the kids you think about kids giving that's you know you you just you're just easier with them you know you just you know when you discipline them and it's not like I'm gonna rip your head off It's more like, I'm crazy about you, so bend over. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's just different. Everything's different. Everything's totally different. It's because he's the God of this universe. He's crazy about us, and he knows what's best. So when we listen, and we do, and we become those doers of the word, then everything seems to work. And see, we begin to improve the quality of our lives. And then that guy out there that is hurting for quality, maybe he's a jerk, he'll be wanting to know why you have that quality in your life. And when he walks up to you and asks you, you politely ram it down his throat. <laughs> Go get him, right? Go get him. It's amazing. It's wonderful. There's been some times, you know, in my life when I just, I forget all of that. I just dry up and blow away. I had this song on the radio, and people called the record company and said, did he write this song about Christian artist? Or that, that guy? And, you know, the hip thing of me said, yeah, I'm going to get all them bad guys. But it's like, I wrote this song standing in front of a mirror because I just kind of dried up. I was on my way to blowing away. And you know the things I find now that, that cause me to get all dried up is a lack of accountability. You know, church, you know, it's kind of funny. You come and you listen to this guy talk, right? And you go home. I wonder what church is for. You know what church is for? It's, it's not so we can come get together and, oh, okay, no, 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 praise the Lord, I'm smiling now, I'm going home. <laughs> Church is to save our lives. Church is to save our lives. We get together and we become bigger and stronger. We have more potential. You get a church together that all are giving and caring for the other one, no matter what you do, you can tear their walls down. You can't stop them. Because they're doing what God told them to do. Accountability. 
I kind of, you know, I got kind of tired, you know, I, I get tired. And I'd kind of withdraw and get off to myself. Got a little out of fellowship, you know. The Lord had to whack me. You know how he whacked me? He dried me up. I had nothing. Zero. Nothing. My Bible lights up when he talks. Red letter kind of a guy. I was reading in Revelation about those guys who need to return to their first love. I thought, no, man, not me. I'm your buddy. Right? Didn't work. Just kept reading it, man. Kept sinking in. Kept hurting. It hurt. Because I didn't want to be one of those guys that forgot about Jesus because of what he'd done on the cross and was living for myself. But I was definitely one of those people. But it's kind of cool, you know? You're in this place. You call him. Tell him, I'm sorry. I see what I've done. It's not like you got to go way back over there where he is. It's like he's right there. It's amazing. He's right there. All of a sudden, it just kind of starts working again. And I wrote this song. I have people come up to me and say, you know, man, I really identify. And I can say, well, have you been doing this? And have you been doing this? And have you? Because see, it's not like I'm guessing. It's like I know what they're I know what they're feeling. I know that horrible, dry, empty, undisciplined feeling. I know it. I know it well. But there's a way to sidestep it and go on. It's a great groove. It's wonderful.
because it's a it's kind of a Mexican thing, Mexican song. It's great. It wasn't a Mexican song when I wrote it, and it wasn't one when I recorded it even. And it, it came out. It wasn't a Mexican song for several years. And all of a sudden, this Mexican got a hold of it, right? He messed it up. It's but it's a it's quite for a Mexican for a Mexican song. It's quite nice. can't be having as much fun as I am. There's no way. <laughs> so, don't run. Don't turn. You know, take him for what he is. It's not really hard to accept him, you know. He's not a jerk, you know. He's not the kind of guy you not likable. He's Jesus. And he's amazing. And I don't know why he cares about us. I have no idea. He doesn't explain it. He doesn't tell us why he's crazy about us. He doesn't tell us. He just did all that stuff. He really is amazing. And all you have to do 
You say yes. Turn and follow. That's great. For good this time And love is out of sight But let me tell you It is not too late To turn and make it right Run away There is shelter from the storm Understand We'll be there for you, say so, and love will be at your door if you just say so.
Golden Gate. You have that tape up there? You can play it if you'd like. Better turn it up, though. Really loud. Way up. Way up. go get him. <laughs> We're just going to take a time now. Those of you who want to slip out, just feel free to slip out. If you're here this evening, I know there's some people here that are sick, that are from the church, that are part of the church. We want you to come up for prayer. Roby's going to come out. We're just going to worship the Lord. We're going to play a few songs. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ, we're not forcing medicine down anybody's throat. We're offering eternal life. 
He died for you. He loves you. If you're here tonight and the Lord touched your heart and you know it and you can't escape it, as we're praying and there's people coming up for prayer, I encourage you, come up. We'll pray with you. We'll give you a Bible. And uh, as he comes back, don't get lost, you. Okay. Scotty, you want to come up? Mary? Vicki, why don't you come up? We'll start with you, and that'll encourage some other people to come up. Vicki needs surgery next month, and there's a problem with cancer. So, uh, Frank, Jerry, those of you who are led, come on up and pray with us. If you're here and you want prayer for your marriage, if you've just been touched tonight, I encourage you, come forward just as we worship now, and we'll pray with you.